Okay, welcome back to another phenomenal tutorial in Maya. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, but I thought let's hop on the bandwagon and let's get back to it. Anyway, for this I'm going to do, do another simple uh, still life object modeling tutorial for this one. It's going to be very simple. I, I don't think this is going to be very hard. And the only reason why I feel like I should do this is because there's always going to be people out there who are going to want to know how do I do this or if they're just starting off with modeling on still life objects they're just going to want to know exactly how to do it and what better th than I to put something out there right away so someone could f use it even though it may not be as popular for some it is also very helpful for others so let's get started why don't we start modeling a still life pencil so the first thing you're going to want to do is always start with reference. So first thing you're going to want to do is create um, a simple uh, plane right here. So this is this should suffice. Uh, press 5 for shaded and then what you're going to want to do is once you've created that go to your hypershade, create a Lambert material. Take that Lambert material, always label this. I always, yeah, always, uh, I've been always taught to label your stuff regardless. So we're going to name this pencil mat, so pencil material. So uh, what we're going to do is click that, file, and then let's get our uh, picture. So let's go there, yeah, and there it is. So let's open it up. Okay, so once we have done that, let's apply it to the material. So all you have to do is select your object, uh, do a right click assign material selection, press 6, and you should have it. There you go. So that's your material. So now when you ever you create another material, you should have something like that. All right, so let's bring our object up here. So this is a good start. You know, I, I couldn't find much of a, you know, of a good picture, so I thought, like, maybe we can just do it this for now, and maybe we can do our modeling from this. The only reason why I recommend doing this is because you always want to use a reference photograph whenever you are trying to reference something because you'd never want to come across as somebody who can, I mean unless you're one of those who can um, do it by heart, which you have to be an absolute uh, pro at this, to model an object without even having to look at a photo because you know even I would even imagine uh, I'm not the best at it either. However, I've been taught, though, by you know professionals that you know you don't want to necessarily reference something without looking at a reference photo because if you mess something up and it looks wrong, well, yeah, you get the drift. So, so anyway, let's get uh, started here. So let's go to our top view. Oops. So just go up to here. Press spacebar. Yeah, just click over here and then spacebar into the top view press 6 and there you go okay so let's first let's kind of extend this out a bit that's pretty good okay so the first thing we're gonna want to do is create a, a cylinder so let's create a cylinder it's about that size that's good alright uh, go to your inputs in your attribute editor uh, make I always put subdivision caps I always turn this to zero because I never really want uh, anything for the caps. And then for subdivision axes, I would just probably go with a 7. So that's pretty good. Okay, so next thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is look at your, your photograph, or look at your object, make sure it's good. Okay. So um, now you're going to want to, obviously, you know, rotate this. So let's put this 90 degrees. Oops, wrong way. Nope. Z. I always get this messed up. Okay. All right, so rotate your, on the z-axis, rotate it 90 degrees, and then you're going to want to extend this to the length of the pencil. And if you want, you can always do an x-ray, just click this up here, or if you are too, uh, too lazy to do that, there is an alternative way. You can go to your reference material, and you can turn the transparency up. So, but uh, what I like to do is just, uh, you know, I like to just press X-ray because it just makes modeling from a light, still life object a lot easier. Oops. Uh, oops. Ah! Yeah, whatever. Okay. Okay, so let's just get started. 
All right, so for your first one, first thing you want to do is extend this out. So let's just extend this all the way out to the length of the pencil, probably make this a little bit more shorter. So get that to about, eh, to about right there. It's usually good. Uh, let's go a little shorter, all right. Uh, if you want, you can to it. You can rotate it to exactly how you to the length of the pencil. So that's pretty good. Okay. All right. So once you have that set, now this is where you'll kind of tweak it. Let's see, it's a little rough on here. So let's see if we can tweak that down a bit. That's pretty good. Okay. So once you have that set. Um, go to your top layer, go to this top view right here, and then what I do is I try to kind of just go up this way. And then instead of like trying to model it out, you can just extrude it. It's really easy. So um, go to, you, to your Edit Mesh Extrude, or if for sake and purposes, if you want to put it on your tab, just Shift Option to put it on the tab. Um, or shift control, I think. Yeah, shift control for Mac users. And then you should get your icon right here so you have your own little shelf. A little bit more convenient. Okay, so then what I do is to create that triangu triangular look. Um, I press the little square and then I actually try, then I just lower this in a little bit and then I extend it out. So, and now you're going to see how it works. So let's go to our top view. So let's just kind of see if we can get our thing right there. Oops. A lot of it's kind of just, you know, you have to view it, see how you like it. So it's pretty good, but we still have to create a little bit more. So we'll create it to about right here, and then we're going to extrude another piece out. So. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I kind of like that. All right. So now, once we have, uh, let's see. That's pretty good. Okay. So once we have this out, now we can do another extrude. Do the same thing, except this time, however, we're going to extrude it out a little bit farther. So let's go back to our front view, our top view, and then we're going to just do the same thing. Okay, and then go back to your perspective view, get it out to an appropriate size to where you have it exactly where you want it. So it doesn't have to be like on par with the picture, but it does as far as if you want the pencil to look, you know, accurate. So let's see if we can kind of just tweak that a bit. Go in there. So it looks pretty good. I like that. All right. So now we have ourselves a really nice looking pencil start head. So that's that. It was pretty easy. It, all it really is is just extruding these two points out and then extruding more. So and then just shaping it out to how you want it. Okay. So now for the next part, we have to get the eraser, and this is where you just have to kind of do the same thing, except you don't have to do as much in the way of of extruding and shaping it out. So select this face. Then you're going to do an extrude, and then you're going to bring this piece out. So that's pretty good. Now the next thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is shaping. This is going to be about shaping it to how you want it. So let's go to our top view. See if we have this exactly how we want it. So that's a pretty good. With this, now you want to extend this part out right here. And we can always round this off, so don't worry as far as it not being rounded off because obviously it's at a kind of an odd shape right now it's still at a um, still at an octagon look so um, or a pentagon I meant so so now what you have to just extend basically do another extrude so do another one and then just extend that out and there you go so you, that's, that's pretty much all you have as far as with the with the pencil and there, now you have yourself a really nice looking pencil. 
So, and this is kind of just for anybody who, who just wants to make really simple still life objects. So, now, of course, you know, it, it, with requiring to get this part with the round, with the roundness of it, you know, you're going to have to, you know, do your own thing as far as, you know, adding in edge loops just to sort of keep the shape of the eraser, you know, where you want it. So, oops, I accidentally pressed it. Oh, shoot. All right, because when you want to, when you smooth when you smooth it out, then it's going to look a little bit nicer. But the problem is though, is that you have kind of smoothed out the other pen, the other pin point of the pencil. And in order for you to really maintain this rough edge look, that's where you're going to want to add in all your edge loops. So kind of just you know play it from the, play it by eye and see what you can come up with. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack um, all that, and then for this, I'm going to come over here and add in some more edge loops. So, because I want to maintain the shape of the pencil tip, otherwise it's going to continue to really lose it it's gonna also yeah it'll continue to lose its shape and be too round and then once you go to smooth it out uh, then it won't look right and then it's gonna look kind of odd so just kind of add in more of these edge loops you probably don't have to add as much as I added in right here but I'm just kind of trying it out for the sake of it I'll probably go and redo it later so and there you go so you, now this is where you kind of have that nice little tin point but there's still you know it's still a little smoothed out we can probably maybe decrease some of these edge loops let's see if we can just do this um I don't know we could probably play around with it as far as you know smoothing it out but that's okay so what I'll probably do is I will go back and just uh, make some adjustments to it because when you go to smooth it out yeah see you know, you don't want it, you don't want it to lose its um, you don't want it lo it lose its ed edges. Otherwise, it's going to look really funky when you go to model when you go to shade it and texture it, model, and then you know add in all your little detail. So let's see if I can do that to the eraser and then press Q and then there you go. So you have something kind of like that. Um, I don't think, I think with the eraser, I might want to probably redo this. I think I might want to try something, because I think what happened was, see, when I'm looking at the eraser right here, it, it still kind of looks a little, like, it still doesn't look like an eraser. It looks like it's just kind of the continuation of the pencil. So what I'll probably do is, just for the sake of expediency, I'll just delete those. Go to the edge. Select that edge, go to Edit Mesh, uh, not Edit Mesh, Mesh, Fill Hole, and then go back to Face, do an Extrude. Maybe in this time I'll just uh, see if I can extend it a little bit more, like that. Go back to my reference photo here. Um, I think well, what I'll do maybe is I'll redo that. Instead of going in, I'll go out, uh, going out, go in. So, and then extrude again. There we go. So now it looks a little bit nicer. Instead of having, you know, it kind of being a continuation of the pencil because that would look kind of weird. Okay, so let's uh, Q, let's go back to this, do a smooth, and that, that that looks a lot better. See, now we have this, like, nice little edge right here. So, I, I'm, a lot, I'm a lot more satisfied with that than I was initially. So let's go back to uh, our rough edge. And then just for the tip, I guess I'm gonna, what I'll have to do is just add in a little bit, I'll have to add in a, a, a quite a lot of edge loops in order for it to obtain, to maintain its shape. Otherwise, um, I don't know what's going on here. My, my usually bugs quite a bit. But to, for it to maintain the rough edges, I'll have to just add in a lot of edge loops. So, But that's pretty much it as far as modeling this pencil out. 
and then maybe for the next video I will go in and maybe just go into Photoshop and see about uh, tweaking it um, or putting a texture on it but first what I'll have to do is unwrap it so and I will do that in the next video so hope you enjoyed and uh, if any questions let me know